I'm here with Mike Erin Trout from Erin Tech Breaking Specialists, and um, he's going to take us through how we uh, set up a load sensing valve for hydraulic trailer brakes. Mike, what exactly is the point of this then? Uh, the idea is to ensure that the, uh, the brake performance is equal to the weight carried on, on the load. In other words, the brakes aren't over braking when it's empty. Um, when it's fully freighted, you want full power. If you use a system where you're on hydraulic rams and the power is too great when it's empty, the wheels will start locking and it in fact can actually step out, uh, which is not the, uh, the sort of thing you want in safety in agriculture. Um, well, before you can even consider fitting any sort of load sensing valve to any trailer, we have to identify the suspension movement. So if we mark a, put a bit of tape or a bit of chalk, a bit of paint, and take a, a reading, this trailer is empty, make sure it's on level ground, and if we take it on the top, we've got approximately 880 millimetre. Most agricultural trailers have probably got between 15 and 30 millimetre of movement. So that's the first thing we've got to do, because without that you can't set any load sensing valves. Principle what? for the fitment of a load sensing valve. First of all, the idea of a load sensing valve is to measure, if you like, the pressure to the braking system. If you're fully freighted, you need full power. If you're empty, you need less power. Simple. If you have less power, you've got less chance of scrubbing tyres out and lock-up. So the, the function is to reduce the hydraulic pressure to the rams once the um, valve is, is set to the specific trailer. Not all trailers will be the same. So, first of all, i just explain what we've got. We've got a balance beam that runs from the front axle to the rear axle using rubber bobbins, which will absorb the torsion and the torque of the axles. Secondly, if you're on undiluting ground, it's got the flexibility and therefore less chance of breaking the arm off. Incorporating the load sensor valve, which is this piece of kit here, you have a spring which acts as a shock absorber and a cable. You may think, why not a solid beam? Well, the axles move around and therefore the cable will move relevant to its axis. The valve has two test points. One's an input, one's an output. And what we do is we fit a gauge on the input. So when the tractor hydrides are pressurised, we can see the reading, um, whatever it's likely to be i.e. 115 bar is the norm. If we then take it off, we can then connect that to the output. So relevant to this lever arm, which is moved up and down, will depend on the suspension movement for that, but it will give you either down as far as 25 bar. It could, in fact, when it's released, and I'll just, ex I'll just show that, I'll just do it, I'll loosen the lock nut off. The lever arm will, in fact, spring up. That will give you full braking. So, for example, if the trailer was being used all the time and it was in this position, this would be approximately 25 bar hydraulic. If you then uh, allow the trailer to be freighted, providing this is set correctly, which I'll go through shortly, that will give one to one ratio. So 115 bar, you'll have 115 bar coming out. Okay. So the first thing we've got to do is identify the suspension movement, which we've identified earlier. And once we've got that, we can then work out. As a general setting, as a general setting, um, 25 bar is too low for majority of trailers. It's been found that general setting of 40 to 45 bar is the norm. It's important to fasten the cable and the linkage relevant to the lever arm, and the instructions show that you can have 60 mil movement, which is unlikely in an agricultural trailer, or between 15 and 30 mil movement, which is more the norm. So we've set this particular piece of linkage approximately 40 millimetre from the point of the rubber end, if you like, the convoluted boot, which keeps all the dirt from getting in and crudding up the entire system. And there we've got the cable. The cable passes through the back of the bar so that as we adjust the nut, we don't chew the cable up. So just as an example, if I use this marker, and I'll try and do it the best I can, we can probably see that we've got, uh, probably there, we've got 74 millimetre. So if we've got a trail of, say, 20 millimetre movement, we want to make sure that if that was released, the arm will travel 20 millimetre to give the full range. 
but we want to set this at 45 bar but without a gauge without a gauge you can't do that so it's, it's absolutely imperative you have a gauge in the first place to to actually identify the pressures in and pressures out but as a guideline if we was to release this this nut it will slide through so we can take that down we can see that 70 720 730 740 we've got 30 mil movement there so as a guideline we'll probably set that as a 20 mil movement so we'll take it down to the base release it 10 millimeter and we'll try to hold that if we can with one hand it is tricky so it needs a little bit of practice and we've got a bit of move, more movement because we've got tension in the spring so there's tension in the spring okay so that's just something to look, look for so bear with me so 75 so if we go if we go down 5 mil to 74 that will take any unnecessary strain out of the cable and we'll see if we can just get that just nip that up any excess cable is keep coiled so it doesn't snag on anything Okay, let's have another look. So we've got 740. So there's now another 20 mil movement. So in theory, what we need to do now will be to pressurise the hydraulics, check the input pressure, remove the test point, and put it on the output, and see if we can get close to 40 or 45 bar. What that will do is we'll identify whether or not the wheels will allow it to slide or not, because you have to road test the trailer. Each trailer will be different. Uh, there is no two trailers the same unless there's a batch built of the same calibre. Um, we've achieved 45 bar um, brake pressure with the trailer that's empty in the position um, of the low sensor valve lever. And this should now um, hopefully st stop trailers from stepping out. Um, and particularly scrubbing tyres out and make it a safer uh, trailer to, to, to use. Uh, that's really the function of the low sensing valve.